Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the single variable new calculus uh, so that even 8th grade students uh, can understand how to differentiate and how to integrate using the new calculus definitions. So, the first thing that I'd like to talk about is the new calculus derivative, which is uh, given right over here. Okay, so let's just go for a This is the new calculus derivative, and <coughs> it's uh, a very simple uh, definition to understand when one realizes that if one has a particular function, let's say, like so, and a tangent line, to that function, like so, then, then the distances m and n, m and n, are distances on either side of the point of tangency. So let's just draw a little point here to signify the point of tangency, right over there. Okay. So if we have a parallel secant like that, let's just use a straight line. Hmm a parallel secant like this yes right then we can draw the distances m and n oops not quite let's try that like so so this is a vertical line and this is another vertical line over here and basically what we've got now is well actually what that to be green. Now we've got the point of tangency here for which we'll have another line. Let's just make this line straight like that. Okay. And then this distance to the left from the point of tangency, this distance is M and this distance is N. Okay. So uh, the definition of a new derivative is given in terms of m and n, and there, if this is point C here, there is a special relationship between C, m, and n, which is given by the auxiliary equation. And that's something I'm going to talk to you about shortly in this presentation over here. Now let's get back to this session here and look at what's happening in the derivation of the integral. So the derivative is not that hard to understand. Uh, all we are doing is saying that the slope of the tangent line is the same as the slope of some parallel secant. And this here always gives the slope of the parallel secant line. And there's a beautiful little proof of that in this applet over here. So if you look at the derivative here and we look at the definition, <coughs> This here gives us the proof that this is the correct definition. Uh, and it's very easy to see. We can take a tangent line Tx, uh, which is tangent to the function fx, and then some parallel secant line. And then because s is parallel to t, it follows that k must be equal to this particular uh, value because this is the slope of the tangent line, right? But the derivative f of x is equal to the slope k. Therefore, f dash or f prime of x is equal to that. And then of course we have a the an extra theorem but we'll get back to this theorem a little bit later. Now a special relationship called the auxiliary equation is derived from m, n and c. And that is not possible in the mainstream calculus because the mainstream calculus is ill formed and you can't do it. So let's uh, Look further now at the definition of the integral in your calculus. So this uh, formula on the right hand side here, let's get rid of this first. This formula here is the definition of the integral. If you had, <coughs> let's say, any particular curve, let's say, let's say y is equal to x squared and another one uh, which is the derivative, or y is equal to 2x, like that, x squared and 2x, then, then what happens is this. If this is x squared here, 
then these uh, tangent lines here have the same length, have the same slope as the length, they have the same slope as the length of the ordinate on y is equal to 2x. So wherever y is equal to 2x, all these lines here will lie on y is equal to 2x. This is true for any function f <coughs> and f dash of x, okay? Any function f of x and f dash of x. The slope on the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line to this point is equal to the ordinate, the length of the ordinate on the derived function. Okay, very important. The slope of the tangent line on this function is equal to the length of the ordinate of its derivative. And so that's how <coughs> that's how we get to determine the new calculus integral, right? Let me see. So the new cal oh, I didn't want to do that. It took off too much, right? Okay, so the new calculus integral is given by this expression here. And all it's saying is that uh, since we have the derivative and we can find a parallel secant anywhere in these intervals, after we've divided the intervals equally into m plus n over k, then obviously we have an ordinate here, right? And that is the ordinate, let's put it in red, that is the ordinate which we're summing up in our integral formula. And that is the same as taking the arithmetic mean of all these ordinates. And thus, by so doing, we're able to calculate the arithmetic mean of all the ordinates in this interval, and then just multiply it by the interval width to get the area that is described over here. Okay, so let's see how that works. So if we come over here, it's actually this applet, we can see that if we have partitions, like so, and we can increase them, and let's show the ordinates. Now these ordinates, by the way, do not lie on the function, they lie on the, the derived function, which is y is equal to 2x, the blue function, right? These, so what I'm, what I'm telling you is that if you have a tangent line here to the green function, the slope of that tangent line is equal to the length of this blue ordinate. Get it? The slope of the tangent line at that point is equal to the length of this blue line. It's always the case. And so we can we can say, well, from the new calculus definition, we can find the, uh, the mean of all these ordinates. So it doesn't matter how many ordinates we have. We can find the mean. And let's just see the mean value there, too. It's actually, uh, uh, OK, the mean, the average value of all the, the arithmetic mean of all the ordinates in here will be the number that we multiply by the interval width to get the area, right? So it doesn't matter what the average value is, or the arithmetic mean is, we will get the area. Right? So you can actually find this applet on my website and download it and see how it all works. And play around with it so that you can understand the concept. It's really very simple. Right, and, and this here tells us the proof that uh, we can look at area as an arithmetic mean. So given any rectangle with dimensions height h and width w, the area is a product of h and w, and h and w are arithmetic means, right? So I think I've discussed that uh, at length in other uh, video. So if you have a rectangle like that, this side here is the arithmetic mean of all these straight lines, the vertical straight lines. And likewise, this is the arithmetic mean of all the horizontal lines. But of course, the horizontal lines are always equal to the interval length, which is w. And this here gives us whatever is under the curve, right? So you've got ordinates like that. It doesn't matter how many you've got. You can look at the theorem. It, do, it doesn't care that you have innumerably many because you will get the correct arithmetic mean. And the reason for that is this sum here telescopes. So if you expand this definition, as I have on the right-hand side here, 
you'll see that all the terms in the middle, okay, all these terms cancel out. And so you're only left with that one and that one. And that's what you have in this definition here. And so, once again, I'll show the strong relationship between the integral and the derivative as defined in the new calculus. In other words, the arithmetic mean of all the ordinates multiplied by the interval width gives us the area, okay, which is equal to the integral as you normally see it in standard form. And, of course, if you multiply um, the, the uh, average value by the interval, you will get the area, okay? So this is the same as what you see as the average value, but it's really an arithmetic mean. Okay, this here is an arithmetic mean. That's the correct terminology for it, not average value as you see. In standard calculus, you have several theorems which are all really the same theorem, and they all relate to this. Uh, the one is the mean value theorem, and from the mean value theorem, we get the fundamental theorem of calculus in one step. In other words, we take this idea here, and just multiply this side by n plus n, and we've got the integral, right? And we've got the integral. And then the other one is the fundamental theorem for integrals and the average value theorem, but they all are really just a different form of the mean value theorem. Okay, so if you're an eighth grader, you should be able to understand all of this because there's no such thing as limits or infinity or infinitesimals. And it doesn't matter how many k's you have in this interval, how many k's you divide it into, because as I said, the sum telescopes. So it doesn't matter if this gets to be very large or somewhere in between, you will always get the correct arithmetic mean. Okay, This is the correct arithmetic mean. You see it? Right over there. And so the new calculus is the first and only rigorous formulation of calculus in human history. Um, the new variable calculus is far more interesting and doesn't use the same kind of approach. There are new uh, objects called tangent objects from which one can perform par partial differentiation and do lots of wonderful things which one cannot do with standard calculus. Uh, this particular approach that you see here that I've shown you can be extended just like the mainstream calculus to multivariable calculus, okay? So it's just, it's very easy to extend, and there's, there's no problem doing that, but the new calculus uh, has a new kind of mathematics which I haven't shared uh, in any publication, and it deals with tangent objects. So I've been trying to uh, get academics to understand this approach here, but it seems to me that, uh, you know, mainstream academia is full of unbelievably stupid people who simply cannot grasp these simple ideas and their minds have been seared with idiotic ideas such as limits, infinity and infinitesimals uh, which are not required in calculus and which in reality do not exist. So <coughs> this is what I wanted to show you here and of course the integral <coughs> is derived as I explained in the theorem and in the new calculus we don't waste time with uh, the basic uh, definitions. A function is continuous on an interval if it is defined everywhere in that interval. It's as simple as that. It's smooth if it is continuous everywhere in, the inter in that interval and only one tangent line can be constructed at each point in the interval. That's also pretty straightforward and easy to understand. And from that we, get, we, we go on to the derivative and have the theorem. This applet here is also downloadable so you can study. And then finally, we show that um, if a tangent line to f exists, then at least one m n pair can be found with not both m and n equal to zero. And that's why a tangent line cannot be constructed at a point of inflection. It makes no sense to, to, to talk about a line there and call it a tangent because it's impossible to construct a tangent line at a point of inflection, uh, especially one which is vertical and has no gradient using Newton's bogus calculus. So uh, 
there, even though the new calculus will yield a general, deriva general derivative at a point on the inflection, you cannot have a derivative at a point of reflection because there is no tangent line there. The modern, ac modern academics will say, well, we derive the derivative in terms uh, of algebra, not in terms of the tangent line. That's absolute nonsense. The tangent line came first and the derivative is defined off the tangent line, not vice versa. You cannot have an algebraic definition of the derivative. It is a geometric uh, definition always was. That's how Newton understood it. That's how everybody else understood it until uh, these times in which we have the big stupid or mainstream academia trying to redefine things which don't make sense, which are confusing, and hence the big crisis in calculus education. The new calculus solves this problem. There, there are no limits, uh, no use of limit theory, no use of infinity, which doesn't exist. Uh, and likewise infinitesimals which don't exist either. So this is really the new calculus for 8th grade students and I think it will be the last video I produce on this. If you have any questions you can visit me at my new calculus site and uh, join my new calculus group and ask questions there and post comments. So. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and that you'll join me again for another presentation. I have many ideas, but due to certain circumstances, I'm not able to produce that many videos anymore as I'd like to, but definitely no shortage of ideas and no shortage of videos. So I can keep producing many, many videos and explaining the most complex uh, ideas in the simplest ways. Now if you go to my YouTube channel, let's go there for a second. Um on the right top I uh come on. Uh, YouTube channel here we go, here we go. Yep. Okay. So if you look at my YouTube channel you can see all the different videos that I have here. Um, I have over eighty two videos that explain all these things plus a whole lot more and you can see topics you know where where the, the idea is is basically so hard to understand because it's a lot, a lot of nonsense um, but these these videos will show you uh, how you can debunk the 13 fallacies in mainstream mathematics how you can get a deep understanding of all the concepts that one takes for granted in mainstream academia and never really understands. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'll leave it at this point and hope you'll join me again in the future sometime. This is John Gabriel and it has been a presentation on the new Catholic channel. Goodbye.